Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is a 518th uh, Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Straight away you'll see that this is a barbarian invasion a battle, and what I'd like to do is invite you to come on a journey with me to discover the Alamanoi faction. Okay, many years ago when barbarian invasion first came out, over 15 years ago now, uh, the Alamanoi faction is a faction that I kind of gravitated towards and played with mostly on barbarian invasion. So it'd be interesting to see how well this uh, faction does on the modern day battlefield. Okay, so we're going to build an army together, and we're going to take that army into battle together. Okay, so it's something a bit different. Okay, now money-wise, we find that 30k each um, seems to bring balanced armies on Barbarian Invasion. That's what we found. We've experimented with different monies, but we find 30,000 seems to be the, uh, the, um, the kind of money that does bring the balanced armies to most of the factions on Rome Total War. Okay, so there's my Alamani faction. You have to obviously put another faction um, underneath that to go into the custom battle, if you see what I mean. So let's say we're going to build an army together and we're going to take that army into battle together. Okay, so there's the unit selections for the Alamani faction. Okay, good selection there, I think. So what I think I'm going to do is have a cavalry uh, general there. Um, as you see, a chosen warlord general. I think it's got two hit points, if I'm not mistaken, yet. So we're going to have the uh, cavalry for our general. Now, here's two cavalry units here. Now, these are two good cavalry units, and it's choosing what you want, really. Now, the Burgundian Lancers, can you see they've got a massive 10-charge bonus? Okay, now, there are only a few cavalry units in the whole game have got that. That's the highest charge bonus in the game. But look at the defense, only 17 defense. So even if you put a gold shield on that, you'd only have 20 defense. So you'd only have to, like, charge that in to get the full charge cavalry bonus and then pull that unit out. You couldn't leave it in melee because I think it could be killed quite quickly with only that type of defense. Or you've got the Barbarian Noble Cavalry. Okay, now they've only got a charge bonus of 6, but look at their defense, 22. If you put a gold shield on them, that would take them up to 25 defense. So you could actually leave them in melee and they still do quite well. So it's a case of whichever of those cavalry units suits your style of play. The Burgundian Lancer is quite fast moving with that big charge bonus that might be something that appeals to you but with only 17 defense I don't think for me I'm gonna bring them I'm gonna go for the barbarian noble cavalry here okay that's what I think I'm gonna go for but as I say it's up to you it's your style of play and um, what army you uh, what cavalry units you'd like to bring there okay so we've gone for the barbarian noble uh, cavalry there uh, put a stripe gold shield gold attack remember six cavalry a max for most units only the Huns have got an 8 cavalry max I'll explain that to you later okay you need to bring archers in barbarian uh, invasion because um, most units are susceptible to archer damage you've got the armored medium range archers or the non armored long range archers okay that's the two type of archers you've got so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring two of the medium range armored archers okay and then I'm going to bring one of the long range archers there. And the armored archers I'm going to put in front of the long range archers there as kind of a shield for him. Okay, so that's, I'm only going to bring three archers there to the fray. Now, you might notice that in this uh, faction you've got berserkers. But what I want to do, I want to do something a bit different. I don't want to bring a berserker, berserker units to the fray. I just want to bring ordinary uh, units here just to see how well they could do without the advantage of having a berserker. Okay. So you've got the Golden Band Infantry. Now, I haven't tried these before, but people tell me they're very good. If you notice, they've got excellent morale. But what I want to do is bring these two units here because these are effective against armor. Okay, that's what I want to bring. So I'm going to bring the Night Raiders. Now, remember, the Night Raiders are effective against armor, but also bring a fear factor. And then you've got the Chosen Axemen. Okay, now these uh, are also effective against armor as well. So what I'm going to do is bring a mixture of the Chosen Axemen and the Night Raiders here to this army. As I say, I just want to try um, this Barbarian faction without Berserkers, just to see how well it could do without them. Okay, so there you go. They've put a stripe on every one of my infantry, but if you notice, I've still got a lot of money left. So what I'm going to do is add more stripes to these um, units here. Okay, now, as I say, the Night Raiders are effective against armor, and as I say, they bring a big fear factor, taking the morale away from enemy troops and destabilizing them. Now, remember, in Barbarian Invasion, morale is very, very important. Okay, so if you can take the morale away from enemy troops, that's going to make them even more susceptible to routing. And on, as I say, on Barbarian Invasion, um, having morale is a big thing. Okay, I've put a stripe on um, most of my infantry, and I've still got a lot of money left. So you see, I'm going to put some more stripes on them here. 
just randomly putting stripes on whether they're Night Raiders or Chosen Axemen here. As I say, this is a, an experimental army that I'm trying here without Berserkers, so it'll be interesting to see um, how well they uh, they do. As you can see, most of my units have got two stripes on, and a lot of them have got three stripes on, three experienced stripes now. Okay, I'm going to put um, a defense on that a long range archer because it hasn't got a lot of defense. So there's our Alamano army. This is the army that we're going to take into battle against four really good players without berserkers. Okay, so this is an experimental army, barbarian army here. We've just effective against armor units. Okay, and of course those night raiders with a big fear factor taking morale away from enemy troops, destabilizing enemy troops, making them more susceptible to routing. Okay, so there's our experimental Alamani army. Be interesting to see how well it does up against really good players. Okay, so here we are on the battlefield. We're going to have a look at our allies' um, armies here. And our first teammate is brother to remember Aurelius, who has bought the Franks faction. Now, I'd just like to show you here, can you see you've got the uh, Francisca Herban uh, units. Now, these have got throwing axes, and these guys throw these axes, and I think they're effective against armor axes from what I've seen in battle. Okay, so those are axe throwing units. And then you've got the uh, sword Herban. Now, these guys can make uh, uh, shield walls. Okay, so if you make these units um, uh, form a shield wall, you can then put your axe throwing units in behind them, so they're protected from the shield from the shield wall, where your axemen can throw axes over the top of the shield wall into the attacking enemy troops. Okay, so they're got good, good infantry there, and then of course you've got the excellent cavalry of the Franks, the paladins. Okay, now these paladins have got a 10 charge bonus. As we said, that's a massive charge bonus, and there's only a few cavalry units in the whole game that's got that. And these paladins have got them, plus they've got good specifications as well. So make no mistake, Aurelius is a faction of choice, are the Franks, and he plays with them extremely well there. It'll be interesting to see how well um, that faction does during the course of the battle. Our next teammate is our is uh, barbarian invasion player M Am Nestos, who has bought the Huns faction. Okay, now the Huns um, infantry, got to be honest with you, is pretty poor. So what we do, we give the Huns an eight cavalry max instead of the six. Okay, so we give the Huns an extra two cavalry units, so they've actually got eight cavalry units because their infantry is so poor, and they need that little bit of help, I think, to um, to enable them to compete. Uh, on the 30k battlefield there have a look at their um, cavalry here if you notice can you see if you look at them there you can see the tribal cavalry but if you notice they've all got 66 cavalry in instead of the standard 54 cavalry units okay as you see every other cavalry unit or most uh, cavalry units in barbarian invasion have got 54 these guys have got 66 see these horse archers these hunic elite warriors these are some of the best horse archers if not the best horse archers in the game okay as i say the huns um in history were a cavalry based army more than infantry you can see there's a got they've got a selection of cavalry there as well and these are light lancers uh hun lancers here but they are fast moving cavalry so he's got a different selection of cavalry in this hun's army and it'll be interesting to see how well it does during the course of the battle okay but as i say huns in general have not done very well on the 31k battlefield even with the eight cavalry advantage there um and then of course our last teammate sorry um our next teammate is brotherhood member mantu who has got the romano british faction here and i notice that he's quite keen on this faction now these are legionnaires they can throw pilers um and they're very solid troops got good specifications and they seem to hold for a long time when they're attacked aggressively on here seem to have quite good morale if you notice he's got eight upgrades two experience stripes gold shield gold attack on this infantry as I say, they're solid infantry in their own right, but with good upgrades like that, that makes them even better. As I say, barbarian invasion um, morale is very, very important, and that's why you need to bring religious uh, units here to give your um, army that extra morale bonus to keep them fighting longer. So bringing religious um, units is very important. Okay, if you notice here, he's got his... Um, armored uh, warlord general there i think the general looks pretty cool there don't you think there with his uh, retinue of um, bodyguards that's pretty cool i say he's got um, two religious units you see uh, monks 
has that man too for that extra morale bonus for his troops because he knows him how important that is now here are some of the best cavalry in the game the grail knights okay if you notice there's only 32 of them in a unit that's because their specifications are so good you can only have 32 in a unit there but make no mistake this is some elite kind of cavalry here and uh, as I say, that's why the makers of the game can o has only given you 32 instead of the 54 men in the unit. So it'll be interesting to see how well those Grail Knights do. As I say, I think um, this is Man 2's faction of choice at the moment, the Romano-British. And of course, the last uh, teammate is uh, myself, Spartan Commander, and we saw those armies. There's the Knight Raiders there that we bought, remember, with that big fear factor and effective against armor axes. Okay. And, of course, you've got the Chosen Axemen with their effective against armor axes as well. Okay, so there's that uh, experimental army we've built. It'll be interesting to see how well it does against really good players. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at my formation from my Alamanite army. Now, those of you that watched our battle video last week about the uh, Saxon uh, army uh, faction, you would have seen that I built pilot shield units into my army for the Saxons. Well, this army's got no pilot shield units because I've got no intention of being defensive with this army. This is built for attack. This formation and this army is built for pure attacking and aggressive um, tactics on the battlefield here. No defense here. I am going to hit the enemy as hard as I can with my infantry. Okay, the axemen and the knight raiders, and then I'm going to ram home the attack with my cavalry. Okay, so make no mistake, no defense in my mind here. This is going to be an aggressive attacking army. And as I say, I will ram home the attack with my cavalry once my infantry is engaged with the enemy. And that's, well, that's the plan anyway. Okay, so that's what that arm is there for. Okay, just want to show you um, Aurelius is battle formation here. First of all, you'll see Aemanus is um, battle formation here with his infantry. Can you see them? He's got them in that Shultrum uh, formation there, anti-cavalry um, formation there so can you see that his spearmen are facing in all directions with this formation this is a real formation that was used back in the day anti-cavalry formation so whichever direction the cavalry hit this formation look they've got spears facing that cavalry so it's a very very effective anti-cavalry formation there that um um, Nestos has got his uh, formation in. Now we're going to have a look at Aurelius's formation here. Now can you see he's got that um, shield wall, that sword shield wall um, in front of his um, Herban, uh, Francisca Herban axe throwers. So if the infantry attacks that shield wall, that shield wall will hold for ages, allowing his axemen to throw their effective against armor axes into the attacking troops there. So that's a pretty good formation there from Aurelius with his faction of choice. It should be a great battle for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have RVCTG. Now, CTG, this was the first Sunday that he's ever played with us on Barbarian Invasion. And he said he really enjoyed the game. And we played for hours. He played for hours with us. And you can see he's got the Roman Western Empire army there. And if you notice at the front of his battle formation, he's got the Auxiliary Palatina in a spear a shield wall there. Okay, so there won't be any cavalry attack on the front of his army there, not with that uh, spear shield wall there with all that anti-cavalry um, bonus that the spearmen have got. Then he's got his plumbarteri that throw those um, iron darts, iron tip darts, and then he's got his cavalry at the rear there. Okay, let's say there, there was a good cavalry there, the Scola Palatini there, they're pretty good. And I think he's got a Germanic general, is it... Uh, has he got the, yeah, he's got the Imperial German uh, bodyguard there. I think that general looks pretty cool there with his um, retinue of um, bodyguards there. So I think that's a pretty good Roman army there. Uh, their next teammate is a Brotherhood member Mad King with his faction of choice, the Sassanids. And this is an experimental army of his. I haven't seen this army bought before. If you notice, he's got 10 desert archers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, ten desert archers. Now, these archers um, have got good long range and have got really good defense. So, that is a heck of a lot of firepower there that he's bought. And make no mistake, these desert archers are really lethal. And then he's got his Sugdian warriors there with their effective against armor maces. Okay, these are great uh, infantry in their own right with their, uh, as I say, effective against armor maces. But uh, his real powerful troops are his cataphracts. Okay, now make no mistake, you put a gold shield on these cataphracts, and that gives them, get ready for this, a massive, um, I think it's 35 defense. And if you notice here, can you see 
that he's got eight upgrades on there. So he's got two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on those cataphracts. So I think altogether with the two stripes, that gives them a massive 38 defense. Okay, so these cataphracts are, are like the tanks of the barbarian ancient world. And with those upgrades, that's 38 defense on those cavalry. So it'll be interesting to see how this experimental army does, but with only four infantry. Is that enough for the uh, for the battlefield there? It'd be interesting to see. Okay, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Barkley Man, who has bought the Lombardi faction. Okay, now he's got, I think it's three archer units. He's got medium range archers. And then he's got his horde chosen swordsman. Now these got really good defense. There's his um, mid range um, armored archers there. Okay. They've got quite good defense on them. And then he's got his uh, horde of chosen swordsmen. These got good defense as well. I notice he has them at the front of his battle formation there. Because they've got such good defense, they can soak up enemy missiles. Then he's got his knight raiders and is effective against armor axemen. Okay, so this is um, an experimental army. I know he's been experimenting with the Lombardi faction with different units and things like that. But if you notice, no cavalry. Okay, he's got a barbarian noble cavalry unit as his general, but no other cavalry. So very, very heavy infantry-based army there. It'll be interesting to see how well it does. And their fourth teammate, who is uh, hiding in the woods here, is, um, I think it's OTD Pen. Okay, a lot of you will know OTD Pen, and he has bought... And the summation faction there. Okay, so you say OTT Pen G4P bought a summation. Uh, we haven't seen the summations in action much before, so it'd be interesting to see how well the summation uh, does there. The summations do there. Let's say there's their um, noble cavalry. Be interesting to see how well they do. As I say, I don't see this faction bought much on the barbarian invasion battlefield there. Okay, so there's the enemy team. It's got the potential to be a really great battle. Let's say, come on this adventure with me to see how well the Alamani will do. Okay, this battle was very difficult to film because there's like um, two separate battles going on here. You can see that the enemy Sassanid and Roman armies are coming forward on our right flank here to attack us on our right flank. Okay, and the other two enemy armies stay over in the kind of more of the center area here. So it's trying a bit difficult to film both uh, kind of separate battles going on, if you see what I mean. But uh, <laughs> I'll do the best I can here. As I say, you can see the enemy Sassanids and Roman army coming through here on the right flank. Now, I think Man 2 here said, let's hit these two armies with our armies. So maybe we could get all four of our armies on to hitting those two that have come up very aggressively on our right flank here. But um, as you can see here, I don't think we, we actually moved fast enough to do that. And I think that uh, the enemy would have been aware of what we were going to try and do anyway. So let's say you can see CTG and Mad King here coming forward with their Roman and Sassanid armies there towards us. You see Aurelius is backing his Franks off there. And you can see that our um, Hun ally is bringing his um, infantry forward, those spearmen. Okay, so let's say um, we've got a lot of cavalry over here on this side. But as I say, we've got attacking troops coming in on our right. And you can see Man 2, look, is facing his infantry towards the Sassanid and enemy Roman troops there. Okay, with a view for all of us to try and hit those two before their allies could get over to them. But uh, as I say, I think we were a bit far away to do that. And also, uh, Man 2's got to watch his flank there with the enemy Sarmatians and those uh, Lombardi uh, enemy troops there that could come in on his flank. Okay, as you can see here, I'm running my troops over to that flank as fast as I can because that was the battle plan, I think, to try and move over as fast as we can there to try and take on the enemy Sassanid and Roman army uh, with uh, our armies there, kind of in a maybe a three or four hit there on their two armies there. Okay, so as I say, uh, Mad King here with those cataphracts with that massive 38 defense on, I mean, um, they are like a really almost indestructible those um, cavalry units are they've got uh, so much defense there and as I say moving forward with all his archers his 10 uh, units of archers and just four infantry as I say those archers really long range uh, really do a lot of damage good defense as well so that's a heck of a lot of firepower he's brought to the battlefield there and as I say you can see um, our uh, Huns alloy and our Frankish alloy there um, moving their cavalry and infantry together as you can see here I'm moving my infantry over to this flank as well okay now just like I show you here you can see that man 2 is facing 
uh, potentially two enemy armies there. Okay, now both these enemy archer, uh, both these enemy um, factions, both these enemy armies here have got archers. Okay, um, quite a few archers. And Mantu hasn't. Now, as we say, units here are very susceptible to archer damage on barbarian invasion. Okay, and as the enemy have got a lot of archers and Mantu hasn't got any archers, um, he could well lose a lot of his units there from archer fire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loan him my three archers there. I'm going to take my three archers down to his army to try and help him against the enemy archers there. Okay, that's what I'm intending to do. Uh, to try and uh, try and help him there against the uh, the enemy archers that will be raining arrows down on his troops okay but as I say uh, with those um, 10 uh, desert archers of the Sassanids there they could be doing a lot of damage to our infantry yeah you can see he's got them in close uh, tight formation there for more impact and more damage and uh, of course they're protected by his iron cavalry those are uh, cataphracts with their massive 38 defense Okay, so as I say, it's a lot of firepower there that he can be shooting down on us. And it wouldn't surprise me if our um, Hun ally put his um, spearmen... Right, okay, so you can see he's got it in that short-term formation there. Remember that anti-cavalry formation? Let's just pause the game for a second there. So you can see there he set his um, spearmen out in that um, anti-cavalry formation there. Okay, so that's quite a powerful anti-cavalry formation. As you can see, Aurelius has sheltered his infantry in behind those spearmen. Okay, remember those spearmen, I think, are 120 man units. So they're, they're going to take, uh, they could take a lot of casualties from the, uh, from the archers there. But th there'll be no head-on cavalry attack uh, to try and uh, attack Aurelius's units at the front. Not with that anti-cavalry uh, spear uh, formation in front of Aurelius's infantry there. So that's a nice bit of teamwork there, I think, by the, our Hun ally and Aurelius there with his uh, Franks. You can see our Hun ally has got his cavalry uh, locked and loaded there. And as you can see, um, Aurelius has got his cavalry moving around the flank of the Sassanids and the Romans there. Okay, so that's what's happening on our right flank. But meanwhile here, you can see um, that Mantu is bringing his Romano-British away from those two enemy armies, two enemy armies there that may well attack him. Okay. So that's a good move for man to bring his infantry over with ours. Let's keep our um, armies together. Um, and then we can decide what we're going to do against the split enemy team there. As I say, two enemy armies in front of us and two enemy armies coming in on our right flank. Okay, so we're going to decide which, uh, which um, couple of armies we're going to attack with our troops here. But as I say, um, the Sassanids here are um, Mad King's faction of choice. And he's experimented with different army builds as he's still doing with this army build, I believe. But that is the faction that he seems to have settled on, really. The faction that he seems to like best. Let's say you can see our Frankish ally here with those fantastic Paladine cavalry. Plus you've got those Hunic elite archers there that have come out to this flank as well. Remember these uh, horse archers are um, some of the best horse archers, if not the best, in the game. So as I say, you can see we're formed up here and you can see the Sassanids and the Roman general moving forward towards our armies there. Now, who are we going to target? Who do you think you would target? Do you think you would target these two armies on the right flank with all of our armies? Should we hit them in a, like a lightning strike? Is that something that you would do? Or do you think you'd want to concentrate on those two enemy armies in front of us? The Sarmatians and the Lombardi armies there. Which do you think that you would hit if you were in our team? But as I say, we've got our, um, as you can see, our team is grouped together there. So we can move all our armies in one direction in one go if we want to hit either, as I say, those uh, Sassanids and Roman enemy armies on our right or to hit these in front of us, these two armies that are in front of us here. So we're just going to have to make a decision here. Let's say you can see I've got my archers there trying to target the enemy archers, trying to um, get their archers to shoot at my archers instead of uh, shooting um, Man 2's elite infantry there. Okay, but I notice um, with um, a Barclay Man's uh, army, he's see he's got that one cavalry unit there in his old army, but he's I've noticed he uses that quite well to attack archer units. Okay, sometimes he's got a fast moving. Um, cavalry general there which he can move to attack um archers and now can you see here he's now charging forward with his um 
cavalry general there probably with a view to try and take my archers out now I think most of us are probably concentrating on other parts of the battlefield here talking about what we're going to do because otherwise I would have moved my archers back before this cavalry general got anywhere near my archers here so I was concentrating elsewhere on the battlefield here and I could lose my archers um, through not concentrating on what they're, they were actually doing there and being hit by this um, barbarian general okay plus we got a lot of arrows coming in from um, the enemy archers as well targeting my uh, my archers so that was a nice hit there by um, Barkley Man's uh, general unit there. So as I say, now a man two's infantry units are at the mercy of those uh, enemy archers here. So maybe uh, it might be better for us to, I don't know, maybe hit the uh, enemy uh, armies in front of us. Or do you think we should hit these armies here on the right flank? Okay, make no mistake, those um, Roman cavalry are tough as well as well as these massively um, upgraded cataphract cavalry so um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we want to take this cavalry on with our cavalry even though we got the paladins and those 66 man Hun cavalry I've got my cavalry out there as well um, but as I say you can see here I think I'm going to lose another archer unit there to that uh, cavalry general of Barclay Masary York so that's all my archers basically I think have now been taken out or I might have one rallied uh, archer unit left there but so which way are we going to hit here are we going to go for those uh, enemy armies on our right flank the Romans and the Sassanids or should we go for those uh, Sarmatians and Lombardi armies coming in on our um, front there okay so if you notice here we're starting to move our cavalry towards the uh, Sarmatians okay and the Lombardi infantry here because just to give you a heads up this is the armies that we decided we're going to attack we're going to come down here with our cavalry and infantry and try and smash these two armies here before hopefully their Roman or Sassanid allies can get over to us okay now uh, Amestos here with his um, Huns anti-cavalry spear formation there the uh, skull trump he is and maybe man two's infantry they're going to try and act as a blocking force there to hold the sassanids and the enemy roman troops up okay that's what we want to do we want to try and hold the sassanids and these roman troops up here while well, we get the bulk of our cavalry and infantry down to attack the other two enemy armies okay so just giving you a heads up there and what the battle plan is at the moment Okay, as I say here, you can see these uh, Romano-British legionnaires throwing their pilers into the enemy Roman troops here, causing them casualties. And as you can see here, can you see Mantu charging his ground knights into the um, Lombardi infantry, and bang, as they smash in there. Remember those uh, ground knights are really good specifications, but there are only 32 in a unit. And you can see Mantu being very aggressive there with his cavalry. He's bringing some infantry in there as well. So as you can see here, the battle plan here is to move all our cavalry and infantry down to attack the Sarmatians um, and the uh, Burgundy, uh, sorry, and those uh, Lomb Lombardi infantry in front of us. As I say, our Hun ally is going to be um, like the sacrificial lamb, if you like. He is going to be, uh, he's going to take one for the team. He's going to try and block the Sassanids and the Romans coming in on our rear as we're going to try and smash the two enemy armies in front of us, okay? So that's the battle plan. Our Hun's Hun ally there is going to stay in that uh, anti cavalry battle formation there. And with his cavalry as well, it's going to try and hold up the enemy uh, Roman troops and Sassanid troops here, where we take all our infantry and cavalry down here to attack the two enemy armies in front of us. Okay, right, can you see that our Hunter ally is charging his cavalry in there and bang as he charges in there? But, um, like Rome Total War, okay, uh, friendly spears and friendly pikes kill friendly cavalry. Okay, now you've got uh, the archers there shooting into us as well. You've got all the Sassanids moving over there and that Sassanid, Sassanid cavalry coming in. Okay, but as you can see here, our uh, Han ally is charging his cavalry through his spearmen with their spears down to attack the Roman enemy uh, troops there. Now, he, he could lose several of his cavalry here on his own spears. Because as I say, remember in Rome Total War, friendly pikes, friendly spears kill friendly cavalry and he could lose a lot of his own cavalry on his own spearmen here okay he forgot about that when he charged him in i know he said afterwards he forgot about that okay but meanwhile over here on our left flank you can see that mantu's brave grail knights here are up against big numbers of enemy cavalry coming in on them 
Um, once again, I think he's trying to be a blocking force as well, trying to hold up the enemy cavalry there, giving us time to bring our cavalry and infantry in here to try and smash the Sarmatian and uh, Lombardi uh, enemy armies that are in front of us. You can see I'm taking my cavalry out to the flank here with a view to smash into the flank. I'm taking my infantry down there to pin and hold enemy infantry while I smash in with my cavalry. But as I say here, our uh, Hannah Alloy there charges his cavalry in there and bang as he charges in there through his own spears. Luckily, he didn't press home that attack too much, so he didn't kind of press his cavalry uh, further into his spearman than what he needed to do. And there you go, you can see that assassinated cavalry coming and bang as they smashed in there. But if you look there, you can see um, in amongst uh, his cavalry uh, riding out to meet the assassin, you can see uh, several dead um, Hun cavalry there that were killed on his own spears. Okay, so remember, um, in Barbarian Invasion, in like Rome Total War, if you're going to charge your cavalry through Allied Spears or Pikes, they need to lift them before you charge through. As I say, he's um, being a sacrificial lamb here. He is being the blocking force to try and block the enemy Sassanid and Roman troops there of the enemy while we try and smash the... Um, enemy armies that are in front of us here you can see i'm going to charge my cavalry in there i'm bringing my infantry in to attack those sarmatian infantry uh, make no mistake um aurelius is herban francisca herban axman will be throwing axes in there right you can see my cavalry charging into the flank of those enemy infantry and cavalry and bang i smash into that uh, those enemy troops sir okay but there's a lot of enemy infantry and enemy cavalry there that my cavalry have just smashed into there it'd be good if Aurelius uh, has rallied and is going to charge his paladins in remember he's got that 10 charge bonus as he charges in there and bang and he smashes in to the rear of those engaged enemy troops okay so I've got my um, noble uh, warrior horsemen in there and we've got the paladins attacking as well there against those enemy troops we've managed to rout the Lombardi general there as I say I've got my barbarian noble cavalry and the paladins charging in there I've got my infantry there fighting the uh, the enemy troops there you can see that um, Barclay man has activated one of his berserkers there um, we've managed to rout several of their infantry but as I say you can see that um, Barclay man has activated a berserker unit there but my army my army there along with um, we've got some Hun cavalry in there as well trying to break the as I say the two enemy armies in front of us here before we can turn to face the enemy army now right you can see man two a uh, good battlefield awareness here has turned units to face the enemy Roman and Sassanid troops here because he can see that our Hun ally is losing a lot of his infantry so he's facing a threat here meanwhile we're taking all our troops in to try and take out those two armies here as I say our Hun ally here is acting as a really good blocking force there great uh, teamwork there he's used his cavalry as well um, as well as those uh, spearmen there to try and block the Sassanid and the enemy Roman army there giving us time to try and take out the um, the enemy armies in front of us as I say you can see here a mad king uh, using those uh, 38 defense um, cataphracts there against those spear troops there so uh, my guess is that as I know the Huns morale is not very good those spearmen could well rout if they get more pressure put on them but meanwhile here we are still trying to take out the enemy Sarmatian army and the enemy Burgund um, Lombardi army here okay so you can see charging forward here and it looks like we've done what we wanted to here it looks like we've taken out both of those enemy armies that were in front of us okay so the battle plan has worked here to the extent of we've managed to take out those two armies and now we can start turning our cavalry and infantry on the two remaining enemy armies the roman army and the sassanid army okay so um our battle plan worked there as you can see um our hun allies infantry have been broken now but he did his job he held the enemy up long enough to allow us to take out the two other enemy armies there so well done to her uh, our hun ally there he took a hit for the team there he took one for the team there so well done to him um, i think him holding up the enemy team there um was pro probably pivotal to allowing us to take out the other enemy enemy armies there where we could uh, concentrate all our forces on there's that assassinated cataphract cavalry look charging in as i say i think um, my king knows that those cavalry are so well upgraded with their massive 38 defense that he just throws them in because he knows that uh, in melee they'll last for ages they'll hold against a uh, massive attack sir that's how good those um cataphract cavalry are 
So as I say here, Mad King really charging and really aggressive with that cavalry. As you can see here, I'm moving my Axemen and Night Raiders there towards those cavalry. Um, some of our Hun allies' um, cavalry units have rallied, and he's charging back into the fray as well. Okay, so let's just pause the game for a second here. So, uh, the Roman uh, general there with his uh, plumbartorite plumbartor are throwing those effective against armor metal darts into our troops. Make no mistake about that. And they seem to have a lot of these darts. I would say at least 10. Okay, so they will be causing a lot of casualties to our uh, fighting troops there. Okay, and as I say, you can see here, uh, this is interesting. This is the Roman um, spear shield wall against the uh, Frank's sword shield wall so as you can see there's a bit of a tussle there between two shield walls there as they're fighting each other okay and as I say make no mistake those Sassanid desert archers there in that close tight formation um, will be firing loads and loads of arrows into us causing us major casualties there okay but because he bought so many archers he hasn't he only had four Sugdian uh, warriors uh, infantry units so it'll be interesting to see if that cavalry makes up for that. As you can see here, we're charging uh, my cavalry and Hun cavalry plus my infantry into these um, Sassanid cataphract cavalry here. And bang, as they charge in there, trying to take out this Sassanid. Look how long that Sassanid cavalry is holding, even against that massive infantry and cavalry strike that we're putting in on them. Those That 38 defense, those cataphracts really make a difference there. You can see they're holding against, as I say, look at the massive numbers that we're putting in on those um cataphracts and they're still holding okay they're starting to rout now but they held for absolutely ages there's my cavalry charging in there to try and finish them off there but they're still still holding that still some of the cataphracts holding against that massive attack let's pause the game for a second here so you can see fought down to two men and you can still see there's only a few men in those cataphract units but they're still trying to hold against our massive attack there Let's say he's only got four Sugdian warriors here. Can you see some of our allies units are starting to rout? Frank's units and our British uh, legionnaires units there are starting to rout here against the enemy Roman troops. Okay, make no mistake, the enemy Roman troops are pretty tough on barbarian invasion. But as I say, this mass of archers here, of Sassanid archers shooting loads of arrows into us, will be causing a lot of casualties. But bringing ten archers and only four infantry, was that a good army mix? I guess uh, we'll just have to see. But as you can see there, we've, I think we've taken out the Sassanid general now. So that's good news for us. And I think most of the Sassanid infantry and cavalry, all of it now, I think has been taken out. And he's only got his archers left, but you still got those tough Roman troops there that we're still trying to break through here. And as I say, with that massive amount of cavalry coming in on it, uh, sorry, that massive amount of arrows coming in, from those um, <coughs> Sassanid archers there, those desert archers there. Um, it's causing us a lot of casualties. Right, you can see I'm taking my um, chosen axemen and my night raiders straight into those um, Roman troops there. I'm not hanging back here. As I say, my um, army is built for attack, built for aggression. We've got um, <coughs> some of the rallied um, a Hun cavalry coming in on the flank there, attacking those Roman troops. Can you see how well those Roman troops are holding? Now you've got good morale there. As I say, we got um, my infantry and cavalry charging in. Plus we got Frank's infantry charging there. We've got our Hun allies cavalry charging into the flank. And those Roman units are still managing to hold against my effective against armor axemen. You've got Romano British troops in there charging into them as well. So as I say, we're putting a lot of pressure on it. You can see Aurelius' Paladin cavalry probably with a view to charge into the flank of those Roman troops there. But as I say, don't forget those Sassanid archers will be shooting loads of arrows into us there. You can see some of that Roman cavalry charging there and bang! You can see my cavalry charging in there. Can you see what's left of my cavalry charging? My barbarian noble cavalrymen charging there and bang! As they smash in there as well. You can see some of um, our Huns rallied a spearman going here. Right here comes um, Aurelius' paladins there and bang! With their 10 charge bonus. Charging straight in, taking out the flank. And that was a final cavalry charge there to uh, take out the enemy um, Roman troops there. So that's a nice combination hit there from our team, I thought there. Um, as I say, our battle plan worked there with our Hun ally blocking and holding two enemy armies up with the rest of us charged into the uh, the enemy armies in front of us there. You can see that Imperial German bodyguard unit. That's a good unit, very solid there, but against all those numbers, it's not gonna do 
Mako very well. As I say here, um, we're just going to move on now to trying to take out those um, Sassanid archers there. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, the Sassanid general actually admitted defeat there. Okay, so um, let's just pause the game there. So as you can see, our team has managed to go on to win uh, the battle there. And let's say it's quite a spread out battle here. Here's was where the main battle was here, where we were fighting the Sumatians and those um, Lombardi uh, enemy troops there. So you can see the massive dead there. That was where the most intense part of the battlefield on it was there. And you can see over here, that was quite intense there by the number of dead there. And say, um, here it is. Say, in one way, it's quite a spread out battlefield, really. And over here, this is where, um, you can see, I can see a lot of our, um, uh, Romano British troops were fighting there by the dead on the battlefield there. And over here, you can see where those cataphracts there, you can see all the dead cataphracts there holding out for ages there against our big attack. Just goes to show how well they could hold there. More, more dead here piled up, more intensity on the battlefield. And as I say now, we're just going to finish off those, um, Sassanid archers with our, um, with our cavalry there. So as I say, um, the enemy there attacking us on two different fronts may well have been their strategy. But uh, by them doing that, we've managed to um, counter that battle plan there with our battle plan there, where we were managing to hold two of their armies up uh, with our Hun ally there, allowing the rest of our armies to attack the two armies that were in front of us there. So, as I say, it was a good battle plan by us. And as I say, now we're just going to finish off the uh, Assassinid archers there. And as I say, uh, <coughs> it looks like our team has, uh, has managed to go on and, uh, and win the battle there. So I hope you enjoyed uh, our adventure there of building an Alamanite army and actually taking it into battle to see how well it would do. Okay, first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there. As I say, it doesn't matter who wins or lose. As you can see, it was a clear victory there. I thought it would have been average myself, but it was clear. As I say, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. It's all about experimenting in this game for us. Okay, the Alamanite army, remember, with no berserkers. Okay, no berserkers there and managed to get... The highest kills in the game okay so i'm very pleased with that alamanoi faction without bringing powerful units like berserkers still managed to get the highest in the game but I'd like to draw your attention to the second and third highest kills in the game were in the enemy team mad king with his sassanids and uh, rvctg with his roman troops there second and third highest kills so really well done to them that was, uh, that was good. So let's like say really well played to RVCTG. That's the first Sunday he's ever played Barbarian Invasion with us. And he said he really enjoyed it. He said it was great fun. And he's going to be with us next Sunday. And he got some great kills too. So well done with for him for his first battle with us. Well done to Mad King. Now I notice, as I say, that's Mad King's faction of choice. And he consistently gets really good kills with Assassinids. Even with an army with only four infantry. Look at the kills that he got. Second highest in the game. So really well done to Mad King there with his Sassanids. Um, and a Barclay man there with his Lombardi. He probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But I know he's experimented with this faction. Bringing lots of different armies. And well done to OTD Pen bringing the Sarmatians. Probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to. But that was an experimental army of faction for him too. So really well done. Uh, really good diverse uh, factions there in your army. Well done to Brother Member Man too. Possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to do there, but he did well with his uh, British Romano army there. So well done to him. That's his faction of choice. Well done to A.M. Nestos there with his Huns. Um, that is one of the highest kills I've seen with Huns in the game. They usually get well under a 1,000. So uh, he did well there with the Huns faction there. And as I say, he took one for the team, holding up those two enemy armies there, losing most of his army there, but he did the job. And well done to Aurelius with his Frankish army there. That's his faction of choice. So once again, really well played for everybody in the game. And what I like is about these battles, look at the diversity. Eight different factions in this battle, uh, all with their own strengths and weaknesses. It's really interesting. Quick look at the statistics of my Alamanite army. Remember, no berserkers. There, if you look at the cavalry, didn't do too bad. I see one cavalry unit killed 262. Um, but nothing really, if you look at the kills, nothing really outstanding there, I don't think, from what I can see. Um, and as I say, <clears throat> we didn't bring any berserkers. We just used the ordinary uh, units in this army. So uh, as I say, it was an experimental army there. And uh, as I say, we managed to scrape in the most kills there. So Spartan Commander saying, I uh, hope you enjoyed this battle. We play Barbarian Invasion every Sunday night from 8 o'clock. So if you fancy a game, just come and join us. It would be nice to see you. Spartan Commander saying bye for now. See you soon.